गुड मॉर्निंग एवरीबडी माई नेम इज डॉक्टर गौरव अत्री जूनियर रेजिडेंट पी जे एम एस रोहतक द टॉपिक ऑफ माई पेपर प्रेजेंटेशन इज रोल ऑफ एम आर आई इन डिफ्रेंशिएटिंग वेरियस कॉजेज ऑफ लार्ज ज्वाइंट मोनो आर्थराइटिस इंट्रोडक्शन आर्थराइटिस मीन ज्वाइंट इन्फ्लामेशन इट कैन इन्वॉल्व वन ज्वाइंट और मल्टीपल ज्वाइंट्स और मे स्टार्ट एज मोनो आर्टिकुलर एंड देन इन्वॉल्व मल्टीपल ज्वाइंट्स इट मे ऑल्सो बी अ पार्ट ऑफ सिस्टमिक डिजीज मैनिफेस्टेशन एज सिम्टम्स ऑफ मेनी डिजीज ऑफ मोनो आर्थराइटिस ओवरलैप द डायग्नोसिस पॉज इज अ प्रॉब्लम पेशेंट्स ऑफ मोनो आर्थराइटिस में प्रेजेंट विद ज्वाइंट लाइन टेंडरनेस पेनफुल एंड रिस्ट्रिक्टिव ज्वाइंट मूवमेंट रेडनेस इंक्रीज इन लोकल टेम्परेचर ज्वाइंट फंक्शन लॉस एक्सेट्रा अर्ली डायग्नोसिस ऑफ अक्यूट मोनो आर्थराइटिस मैंडेटरी एज कार्टिलर डिस्ट्रक्शन कैन बी देर इन वेरी क्विक सक्सेशन Rheumatological arthritis and tubercular arthritis both are causes of chronic arthritis but both present with pain and restricting joint activity the involvement of multiple joints may or not always true hold true for rheumatic arthritis as an oligoarticular variant is also common similarly transient synovitis and septic arthritis are common causes of mon acute monoarthritis and both present as hip pain limp fever and irritability but sequelae of both are very different septic arthritis is known for destructive nature while transient arthritis has no such sequelae MRI has better application in diagnosing evaluating the extent and preoperative planning and follow up chronic monoarthritis various changes detected on MRI are joint diffusion perisynovial edema bone marrow edema bone erosion synovial proliferation soft tissue collection ligament tendon and muscle based on changes in these, these tissues various differential diagnosis can be suggested and a diagnosis is made contrast mri is increasingly used in diagnosis of large joint arthritis it can easily differentiate joint diffusion from synovial proliferation Synovial inflammation shows an enhancement owing to the vascularity increase in arthritis, and there is high correlation between degree of synovial inflammation and vascularity biopsy and post contrast enhancement. Aims and objectives: to evaluate role of magnetic resonance imaging in clinically diagnosed large joint monoarthritis. Material methods: the study was conducted on 50 patients referred from different inpatient and outpatient departments of PGMS Rohtak for clinically diagnosed large joint monoarthritis. The relevant clinical parameters were recorded, followed by MRI imaging. Parameters that were taken on MRI were presence of joint diffusion, synovial thickening, perisynovial edema, bone erosion, lymph nodes if they are present or not, bone marrow edema, soft tissue collection present or not. So, p-value of bone erosion among various type of monoarthritis of arthritis was 0.09, which is not significant in our study. P-value of synovial thickness among various type of arthritis was 0.03, which is significant. P-value for bone erosions among various type of arthritis was 0.09 which is non significant p value of perisynovial edema among various type of arthritis was 0.99 which is not significant p value for effusion was 0.76 which was also not significant in our study the most common joint affected was knee joint with uh, 35 patients 70% followed by hip joint then shoulder and ankle and elbow septic arthritis patients presented clinically with pain fever tenderness and erythema 100% of septic arthritis showed joint diffusion followed by synovial thickening lymph nodes bone marrow edema bone erosion and perisynovial edema in our study features of tubercular arthritis were as follows synovial thickening was the most common thing 60% grade 3 and 20% grade 2 then joint diffusion perisynovial edema bone marrow edema bone erosion and lymph nodes were 100% absent There were three patients of rheumatoid arthritis. The features on MRI in our study in these patients were synovial thickening, 66% were the grade three, 33% grade two. Joint diffusion, 100% were mild. Bone marrow edema, 66% grade one, 33% grade zero. Bone erosions, 33% grade zero, one and two each. And peripheral synovial edema, 100% were grade two, zero. There were two cases of lipoma arborescens. MRI features in these cases were found like synovial thickening, which was grade three and hundred percent. Joint diffusion moderate, hundred percent. Erosions, fifty percent absent, and fifty percent were grade one. Bone marrow edema, fifty percent were grade one, fifty percent cases absent. Perisynovial edema, there were hundred percent absence. Lymph node present in hundred percent cases, and subcondyle cyst, fifty percent. Tubercular rheumatoid arthritis showed a higher grade of synovial thickening as compared to septic or non-specific. P P value for synovial thickness among various type of arthritis was 0.03, which is statistically significant. Infective cases showed diffusion more commonly. P value for effusion among various types of arthritis was 0.76, which was not statistically significant. Infective cases has higher chances of having perisynovial edema as compared to non-invasive one. P value for graph angle AP and lateral view, 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 and sagittal sections. This all reveals synovial thickening of grade three, enhancing bone erosion with bone marrow edema. Radiograph of ankle is normal. The patient had a cavitative lung lesion, 
and the peri bronchial valve was revealed tubercular mycobacteria final diagnosis was tubercular arthritis uh, figure 2 45 year uh, male with right ankle swelling and things reveal the findings reveal the findings reveal the findings reveal asymmetric synovial thickening and enhancing bone erosion tenosynovitis following synovial biopsy a diagnosis for rheumatoid was made patient was given methotrexate and was relieved figure 3 48 year old female presented with pain in right knee of 3 months duration the imaging findings were multiple loose bodies massive joint diffusion synovial thickening final diagnosis was synovial osteochondromatosis secondary to osteoarthritis so these are the references thank you everybody